how to live and become independent and how to write, is interested in moving up to a higher level of, of problem, is interested in pushing themselves, is interested in keeping on keeping on. Whereas a belief in ability seems to produce the opposite. So the question then is, how do we get our children to have this effort focus rather than ability focus? Well, last experiment. Um, this is the fourth experiment. This is the last one. This is the most interesting one. Where what she did was she took a whole group of students like this, a group of this kind of size, and she gave them all these puzzles to solve, ten puzzles to solve, and then she arbitrarily divided them into two groups and took them away, and took one group away and said to that group, "You got eight out of ten of those puzzles right, and it's wonderful to see how much effort you put in, how much hard work, how much you." You, you really tried and you really pushed yourself and you, you achieved 8 out of 10. It's fabulous to see. Then she took the other group away and she said to them, you got 8 out of 10, right? And it's wonderful to see what natural ability you seem to have, what talent you seem to have. You really got these kind of smarts. You're really good at this kind of stuff. It's amazing to see. You seem to have this real talent. And that was the only difference between the two groups, was the feedback they received. Not their own belief, just the feedback they received. Put them back together again. And then she offered them the opportunity to move up to more difficult puzzles. The ones who had had the effort feedback were interested in moving up to more difficult puzzles. The ones who had the ability feedback were not interested in moving up to more difficult puzzles. She then required them to move up to more difficult puzzles. And of course they were more difficult puzzles, so their scores were, they got less right than they got the first time. But the ones who had the, had, had the effort feedback, their scores dropped off just a little. The ones who had the ability feedback, their score, scores dropped off dramatically. She then gave them puzzles back at the original level of difficulty. And the ones who had the effort feedback, their scores increased dramatically. And the ones who had the ability feedback, their scores were worse than they were originally. Because they'd been through an exercise where they'd done hard puzzles, got more wrong, and they thought, well, I can't do them now. So their scores went down. And then the most telling thing, I think, was the last thing. She then asked them both groups to write a little paragraph on how they thought the experiments had gone, and include in that the scores that they got for those three little exercises. And she found that 40% of those who had had the ability feedback lied about the scores. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Made them look a bit better. Because <laughs> the focus in ability focus seems to be proving that you've still got that ability. Now notice that the only difference there was the feedback they received, not their own belief. So this is the critical thing. And this is what I've got here, this is what I'm going to hear down to the top of this um, page here. I've got this written down here. So you can take one of these. Well, pretty much. The thing about this praise is that praise for effort seems to link your approval to an attribute of the life. You are so hard working consistent is linking your approval to an attribute of the, of the child over which they have some control. Because you can always put in more effort. And they can grow, develop, and improve their effort, can't they? And so assessment then is a, is a measure of progress and an opportunity to learn. Whereas approval for ability, you're so smart, talented, intelligent, links approval to an attribute of the child over which they have no control. They can't grow, develop, or improve. But generally that is suggested by that word ability. Talent, brains. And assessment then becomes a critical judgment and an opportunity to fail. And this seems to be the critical thing. So the important thing seems to be is to help your children to adopt the effort mentality by praising them for effort. And avoiding, where possible, praising them for ability. Not that there's anything wrong with ability. Ability is fabulous and it's wonderful. And you always want to say, oh, you're so brave, you're so smart, you're so gifted, you're so talented, you're a wonderful guitar player, it's wonderful, whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. There's nothing more enjoyable than, 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 than um, having someone with a talent, um, you know, playing guitar for you, doing something like this, and it's wonderful. But of course, they only get to that point of being a wonderful guitarist by putting in an enormous amount of effort, don't they? And so the trick is to, to Catch them putting in effort. You know, I'm not suggesting you go home tonight, you open your door to the bedroom and say, it's wonderful to see how much effort you're putting in. It's fabulous. <laughs> because you just got them on. The important thing to do is to catch them. Catch them putting in the effort. Catch them um, at any moment. And make sure you all organise your praise, your approval around the effort that you can see them putting in. Because that seems to make a difference. Does that make sense? 